Brad is, look, because you know, you know me, man. I mean, the people out here really don't know me that well. Maybe they might perceive what they hear on the radio, but you know how I get. I, I talk trash. I think I'm pseudo tough sometimes. Like, so I'll agitate people. I'm like the Dennis Rodman of just life. But I don't do that with Brad. Whenever I see Brad, I will leave. Because I, I don't even want to get, like, jujitsu. I don't even want to give, the, I think I said something one time, to Brad, and I might have actually been asking you a question or something, and he turned around, and then blue eyes fixated, fixated on me. I thought, oh, man, I messed up. <laughs> Try to get out of here. I don't know what I did, because I was on my best behavior. But I think I got a little too comfortable, and I think I might have said a joke or something in his uh, Muay Thai gym, the first one. And I, he looked at me, I saw his eyes look over, and I thought, oh, man, stop. I was trying my best. I was trying my best to behave, and... I couldn't, even, I couldn't even do that shit right, man. Because every time Brad... It don't take to, much to get his attention, no. believe me. And I didn't yeah. want it. I didn't want yeah. his attention. I mean, I didn't... Like, you know, I didn't even try to kiss Brad's ass because I didn't want to even be to, to fuck up that... I mean, you know, to mess up that way. You know, I just right, wanted to right. be like, you know, when Brad came, hey, how you doing? And I bounce. Yeah. You know, no conversation. no. Because I, I didn't ever want to get... That's the only dude. Because he just seems like one of those dudes that he's not going to play with you. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. You're not. He's one of those dudes. You might. He's not gonna. He's actually helping you, because he's not gonna let you get close enough. Where he has to whoop your ass, because it looks like he got it in him. Like he just looks like a very tough dude, and uh, smart dude. Like no nonsense. If no nonsense was a person, if the word no nonsense was a person, that would be that would be Brad Olson. Brad Olson was the firstborn of nine. Mom. Judy, she was she was uh, she was rough on Brad, and then the, and the seven after that came. Mom, mom's was a was a hurricane on, with them. You know, by, by the time I was born, she was already done doing the ass mm-hmm. and you know, but Brad, he was the first one, so he had it rough. But mom had kids, you know, year after year, mm-hmm. and he had to take care of. He had to, you know, so on his own, he went. And, you know, be, when he became a teenager, even eleven and twelve, and he was fighting his own brothers. You know, my brother Alan and. Mm-hmm. Him and Alan were, you know, big, big enemies, you know, and um, they love each other, though. But there was, uh, you know, there was always that, you know, brothers, you yeah. know what I mean? They always fight. And Alan was a little bigger, but Brad went and learned and got some skills. You know, he went and started, you know, taking Bruce Lee style of fighting mm-hmm. and, you know, the martial arts and the boxing. And, you know, he started getting skills up, but he had to grow up in the projects. Long story short, he was fighting brothers. You know, he had to fight. He had to fight the blacks. That's a new game. So That's a different game, baby. They, they didn't want nothing to do with him. Yep. Brad would go over there. He, he took took one of one of them down, toe to toe in front of everybody. Nucked with him and beat him up. And one time, uh, big big black. I think his name was Dinker. Mm-hmm. His name was Dinker, big buff black dude. He came over and and uh, I guess Brad was selling weed. I was a little kid at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, he came over threatening my sister and my brother. And he came over one time. I gave him. I reached in and gave him a bag of weed. I was like five years old. And he said, Give me that. I gave, gave him the stuff to him. So Brad went and got him. You know, Brad went and called him out in front of you know fifteen, twenty black dudes out there. Brad went and got him. He went called him out. They got it squared up. Brad is he, he had a dinker had a beanie on. Brad every time Brad hit him, beanie fly off his head and put him back on and crack him again. But um, he got his respect down there. So nobody nobody messed with Brad. So. That persona that you see and feel was uh, was was built, you know, built from from growing up in a project. He was, mm-hmm. he was white. My mm-hmm. mom moved to the project because she got, you know, she had me and Gary, and, mm-hmm. and she got the projects for whatever reason. But and um, he he was he was a tough cookie, man. So it started then, and he just carried that. He that all built up year after year after year. He got more in depth into the jit kune do and and uh, and the boxing and uh, and. Uh, even the grappling, the wrestling, the Muay Thai, he started being, he just started adding more and more. And, uh, you know, he mastered it, and he got really good, and, and he would fight, you know. Then he brought me into it, and he beat me up a few mm-hmm. times, and he beat other people up, and beat people up in stores, and, and Brad's all, you know, I whooped this, I whooped this motherfucker's ass, we were shopping at Albertsons, and, and then the motherfucker came down the aisle, and I, I said, what, you know, and that's how Brad talked, man, I whooped this out, I hit him in the face, and you know, Brad, Brad's just, he's always fighting somebody, yeah. you know. We'll be at family events. Mm-hmm. You know, and Brad, Brad, you know, have a beer or two, and then he starts walking around looking at everyone. Mitch, come here. Let me show you this new punch. Yeah, get your hands up. Let me show you, get your hands up. So Brad, all right, you know, all, 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 Brad, man, Brad, hold on a minute, man. You know, Brad, I'm cool, Brad, please, you know. Come on, man. You know, so, yeah, that's, that's big. 
That's my letter. Grind, so, I, my, yeah. It's like my soul told me that. It's not like my eyes, but my like my soul said, "Yo, let's get out of here. Let's go get some milk." <laughs> now he wanted to get you. Though. I think Brad. He never said it. But <laughs> I think he wanted. He wanted. He wanted to tap, touch you up a little bit. I think Brad did. <laughs> I think. Well, why? I never. Well, you know, because you 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 were just wild. You know, even when when you weren't when you didn't know it, he's watching. Okay. You'd be around. You'd be, you'd be wilding out somewhere. You know, talking to someone or. You know, doing what you do. He was a bad boy back then a couple of years ago. But Brad, he'd be listening. Brad, mm-hmm. Brad watching. Brad a predator. Mm-hmm. Brad, Brad, he, he he's watching from a distance. He's listening from a distance. So he knew he knew about you. That's why every time you came, he knew he knew you was a jokester too a lot mm-hmm. of time. But you know, at the same time, you just when you step out of line, you, he's you know, but he was ready for you. He's like a, I was trying my best. Yeah. That's why I said going back to the going back to the Muay Thai gym that day. That's why you know, I, I, like I, I don't know what we were doing because I think we were looking at his upstairs because um, he had the loft in the right. gym. I was like, man, and I think I said something. I just saw his eyes shooting like, oh man, was, oh, man. It's like when you're trying to be a, like when you're a little kid and you're trying to be good. Like oh, you're good all day, then. Oh, I've been good. Let me reward myself with this cookie, and you eat it. And your mom's like, "Who took my cookie? Damn it! I can't have anything." You know, I tried. I tried so. I tried so good to be good. I tried, and you're like, "Oh and no, you're the only one home." Did you eat my cookie? Oh man! It's like everything I tried to do good means nothing now. Now I'm going to get punished. I felt like a punishment was coming that day. I said, "Man, I'm about to get punished." Now I don't know how we got out of the gym, but we got we got out of there. And I don't think I. I don't think I went back. And when Brad came to the other gym, yeah, I would just, every time I, I think, I would just see Brad come in. I never disrespect. I'd always say, yeah, hey, Brad, how you doing? Boom, and I bounce. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't give time to come, because a lot of people, you know, would kiss Brad's ass not to get slapped, you know? Yeah. You know? And then I'd be like, nah. Like, when a group starts to form, when he's talking about a skirma that one time, I never knew about a skirma. So Brad said, hey, this is new, new kind of martial art. You can use a weapon. I'm like, oh, weapon, that's cool. So the, a group started to form, I said, no, it's a bad idea for me to, me to stay here. There's too many volatile forces that might get me crazy. Let me, let me, so I'm listening to your conversation from around the corner, like some, like some little kid trying to hear about, the, hear about, hear what the mafia is saying. So that, that's how, I, I don't know, something in me just said, man, that's a dude that you want to leave alone, you know? You just want to leave him alone and, and don't mess with him, man. And I always did. I always respect. But, you know, so yeah, man, Brad, you cool cat, man. Yeah. Accomplished dude, good dude. He just, he just. That's the way he was taught, man. Mm-hmm. He'll put it on. So he, he, he brought Harvard <clears throat> kickboxing into existence, mm-hmm. and he taught, he taught old school. You know, he taught Bruce Lee style. You know, he taught Dan. Uh, what was his? What was our Sifu's name? Richard Bustillo, mm-hmm. Sifu. You know, we used to go to IMB Academy before that, and then Brad broke off and opened his own spot up. And you know, Brad used to fight. Man, I remember we used to fight. I remember I'd gear up. I'd fight the whole gym. I'd gear up. That's Brad. Brad would, Brad would spar anybody anytime. He'd be fighting his students. I'd do the same thing. I'd strap up, put the shin guards on, wrap up, and I'd fight each and every one of them. We'd just go round and round. Call them, um, what do they call it? Round Robin? Round Robin, round robin yeah. And we just we just go, man. But we, we got that aggressiveness from him. So all his students were kind of extra aggressive because he, he was aggressive. And it, I'd have to I'd have to go chase people out the door. I'd wait, Brad, because it'd be their first day. Mm-hmm. First day, Brad already already knocked him to the ground with a kick, with a punch. Let me show you this coming up. Boom! And they, they hit the ground. And they get back up. Okay, they don't know. They're kind of in shock. They don't know what to do. They're like, okay, you know, good job, good job. You know, walk away. Go to that guy. Almost starts crying. He, as soon as Brad turns around, he walks out the door, and I'm mm-hmm. the one all hey, 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 come on back, buddy. Hey. Mm-hmm. You know, his first days are tough, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to trying to help, man. But yeah, he lost a lot of students. Man. Wow, beating them up. Wow, beating them up. They get their feelings hurt. That's mm-hmm. why. That's why I train. That's why I train differently. Mm-hmm. I try. You can't. You just can't come out the blocks beating people. Like I told you about Doctor Paymon today. Mm-hmm. It's been four months. I told you we barely started doing, mm-hmm. you know, hit drills and you know learning how to you know block and hit. And mm-hmm. stuff. That's four months later. Mm-hmm. First day, Brad's kicking someone. Yeah, punching someone. So so old school. Yeah. It's like that old school sort of Asian technique. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, I mean that, it doesn't work, that doesn't really work for me. Either. No. If no. I was to get kicked that first day, I, I would leave too. Yeah, I don't recommend it. Because I think uh, my feelings get so hurt, but I want to get revenge, but you're not going to get revenge. So it's almost like you're caught in a conundrum. Like, what do I do? He just kicked me. I'm ready to cry. I'm going to whoop his ass. I don't have 12 years. <laughs> I don't have 12 no. years to develop into a master. I, I, so I guess I'll just leave. I think I, I would do that. Because... What the other thing that does is that what he did a lot of times creates champions. Because people are like when you the student fights the master. What do you, in most movies, okay, I know it's, I know it's um, theatrical. 
A lot of stuff is Hollywood. But what usually happens with the master and the student when they first meet? The master usually whoops the student up, taps him up. Then the student goes and visits the master to learn the technique he used to get tapped up. Then at the end, the student winds up trying to take the master out. Because uh, it, it goes back to that moment. It'll show the flashback when they first met. Any movie, it'll show that moment they first met. You know, Don King, you have been a bad boy. I have been a bad boy. And I'm going to stay that way. Don King, I'm giving you one chance to stop. I will not stop until you are dead. Don King, if I take this finger and put it in your ear, you will die. Okay. Okay. I can't stop the finger in the ear. Okay. And Don King runs away, goes around, finds a mango, eats a mango. Hello, uh, teacher. Yes, Don King. I want you to teach me ear finger style. Okay. But first, make me 12 cups of coffee now, dog. Uh, 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 and, yeah, and so Don King goes through that for 12 years. Then it comes that one time, the master's a little older, has slipped a little bit, got a little gut, you know, and uh, got a little sloppy. Don King is in class. Don King, I want you to go get me a cup of coffee. Get your own coffee, Don King. You have disrespected me. That flashes back Don King's mind to Don King getting a finger in his ear. His face is in a puddle near, near a rice field. And there's like, like little frogs and mice looking at him. And he looks up at the sun and the sun is starting to be blocked out. So he picks that day he got his manhood taken. I will never get you coffee again. And master still sees, or teacher still sees Don King as a little kid. He's always seen him as that. I don't care if he grows into a man seven foot. He still sees him as a little kid. He beat up and boom. They clash, and whatever happens, happens. Sometimes, most of the times, the student beats the master. What I'm saying is I couldn't do that. I would just have to leave the gym. That Brad, he'd he kick me for nothing. I didn't do anything. I just, I was stretching. I was stretching in a corner. I was stretching yeah. in a corner on my iPhone. So, I, so my manhood would be like, we're just going to have to eat this one for three days and go, go join yoga. So that's, 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 that's what I would do. That's what I would try. But the dudes who didn't, they become champions. But they only yeah. become champions because of that. Unless there's like a father-brother moment. I'm sorry, Don King, that I, I kicked you into the, the rice paddy next to the swamp. I love you like a brother. Oh, I know. I know. I, me too. Then you almost die. When Don King has to save his teacher. Then they're cool. They, yeah. then, they're, then they go on to fight the evil village together. Sometimes. Sometimes it plays out that way. Sometimes it does. But in real life... Uh, yeah, yeah, in real life. I, I've lived it. I've been mm -hmm. through it. I've been mm -hmm. under Brad for mm -hmm. forever since mm -hmm. I was a teenager. He's the one that got me into boxing in the first place and mm -hmm. martial arts and everything. So long story short, we separated for a number of years, maybe fifteen. I went off and learned how to box on my own and went to different gyms and so forth. He continued with IMB. So long story short, we we, we, we got together. Opened up a gym and, 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 and trained together. I was still under Brad. I'll always be under Brad. That, that seafood Brad. And, um, but we got to the point to where, you know, we would spar. Mm -hmm. So we got the, 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 the student and the master. You know, we sparred in the beginning, you know, when, when I first started. Mm -hmm. he, you know, the master, Victoria. It's always been Victoria. Still Victoria. I couldn't touch Brad if he's using legs. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I, I got the boxing thing down. So we... When we start boxing, me and Brad, you know, like, oh, everyone's kind of, who's who these, these two guys fighting? Um, I just don't let him hit me. Mm. I just don't let Brad hit me. I got the skills good enough to where I can just, I just but I'm not going to hit the master. Mm. I'm not going to hit the master. I, you know what I mean? It's to that point to where I, I see where I could I could have, because that's what I've been doing. I was a pro fighter now. Mm. I can get things. So I just I just work. But master was trying to take my head off, mm. though. You know what I mean, Brad? But I, my defense was good enough. I preached defense. It was mm. good enough to... Go ahead and go with the flow and allow that. So he's trying to take me down. I bob him, I weave him, I block him. He's coming with intent. You know, I, and there's times when I knew I could have mm -hmm. counterpunched him or did something. I wouldn't do that. So that's the prince who becomes king. There's the there's the student who becomes master. Then there's the prince that becomes king because he sees the philosophical side of things. And the fact that you can see the philosophical things, and that has made improvement. If you can spare someone, mercy, I feel, is one of the greatest um, attributes or one of the greatest gifts you can give somebody is mercy, mm. especially today. So if you give anybody mercy, because you know, as we said in the beginning in this world of men, 
we're naturally competitive with each other because we, we like to put each other like in positions. Okay, like I'm higher than you. Or if you you got to earn equality with somebody. That's what I'm saying. In the world of men, you have to earn equality. But if not, then you put in a, a lower position. Like you're in my beta position. Don't rise up because I'll fuck you up, you know. But when you've gotten with somebody and you're, you could be equal with them, then it's, um, you had to earn that. And here's the other thing. It's too hard to rise over them because you see what you see if you try what will happen to you. So you're like, okay, I just accept equality with that person. We're cool. It's like you're making a truce with that person, and it's like you know inside of you that okay, if I try to rise up and take the position on him, it's not going to be worth it. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be it's going to be a struggle, and I don't have that much time. I don't have that much time because you just know it, and it's not worth it. You know, this person's not going to let you rise up on them. You're not accept equality. Because a rise up is going to be, number one, hard. Number two, you might fall back to beta. You might fall back there because he might have been giving you mercy. See, people will accept equality. I, I, I don't want to fight this dude forever. I'll just, hey, I could have cracked him. But you know what? That's just going to give him anger. You can see the damage in somebody. Some things are done through damage. That they, some people can't control things. Like, if they're angry, they're going to be angry for life. They're always going to come for you. And you always have to beat them up. And it, it's going to be a point in your life. We don't want to do it anymore. And that's when they're going to get you. Because your heart's not in it. I don't want to keep beating this. It's been 25 years. I beat this dude up every day for 25 years. That 26 year, you know, I don't really want to do. Bop. Bop. And that's all he's been waiting for. Is that one time, that one year. So if you're like, you know, I could do that. But this will keep him at bay. And I can live a peaceful existence. I don't got to worry about this dude. See, that's philosophical, man. And that's what you need to kind of govern. That's like governmental mind. You know? So that's actually the good thing. That's like when you see a movie and, you know, the, the young prince becomes king. That's usually in the big ceremony. The doors open and lights mm. are shoot from the back. And, like, right. virgins and whites are walking. There's big knights walking with big swords. And you see the just the, just the prince, God king, walking behind. He got, his, he got his crown. He sees the empty throne. He's ready to take it. He's humbly. He sits on the crown humbly. I just want to say to all the people that I have declared peace throughout the land. And I'm going to fix all the statues broken in war. And everybody gets a triple cheese cheeseburger tomorrow for free for the God King. Everybody go home and enjoy yourselves. See, that's, what I, that's, that's just that, that peaceful man thing, mm. you know? So that's all I see. That's actually a good attribute. Me, I'd probably just be happy being, talking chat. Hey, yeah, I beat, I beat the master. Yeah, I beat him up. Yeah, you, the master's cool. Yeah, but no, he, 10 years ago, he snuck me. Yeah, but that's, that's yeah. to make you better. But, but I, no, you beat the master? Mm. Oh, my gosh. You you have no honor. You have no respect. I, yeah. I couldn't say the same for Beto Skinny the Black Houdini. No, Beto's evil. Beto. No, you know what? I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't do it to Beto either. I, I couldn't. I couldn't crack Beto, man. Beto. I don't even know if he'll let me crack him. Be honest with you, but but uh, he'll fight you forever. He's yeah, that dude. Yeah, yeah, so that's the one you don't. That's the one you got to make that decision. Like, do I do I crack him? Because mm -hmm. he's coming back. He didn't come back and try to kill you. Every <laughs> beyond, time, yes. Beyond boxing, he might come come yes. kind of stick you or something. Yes. So he'll see you crossing Barry the street. Miller. Miller. That's Barry Miller. It'll be yeah. five years. Beto Skinny, the Black Houdini, former San Francisco 49er. Yes. Said he beat Running up two, back. said he beat up two gay guys on a bus and then ran for his life, ran from the law, came down to Long Beach. I don't know if that's a true Lost story. Lost his career. Just heard it from him. So said this, he said his football career is over for beating up the, the two gay guys in a bus in San, in San Francisco. San Francisco, which is always a bad idea. Always a bad idea. That that should have never crossed his mind. I don't care what they called him. He said there were racial epithets thrown around, but okay, everybody gets them. You just gotta yeah. Well, so, he said that he was he was about I mean, Barry's about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, he said yeah. he was about 220, mm. just, just muscled up, playing running back for the Niners, and they, they hit on him. They like, they like what they saw. So. See, I mean, and that's one thing. That's one of those things. Yeah, as, as men, we all get hit on, but that's a choice that you make. You I mean, don't beat anyone up because a, a gay man hits on them. Especially. You take it as a compliment and move on. Move on. You take it as, as a woman that you're not attractive to mm -hmm. gives you a compliment. You know, hey, thanks, you know, mm -hmm. and then, then you move on, you know. When you're beating somebody up for that, which the violence never should come into the equation of that. Not unless, even if that person, unfortunately, I hate to say, even grabs your junk, you still kind of got to maybe just push them off and get out of there. Well, if they if they if they if they do that, that's kind of. I'd, I'd, 
I'd say that's an assault, but just like it's like the gay doing Long Beach when he grabbed he grabbed me by the back of my head, tried to kiss me mm-hmm. while we were walking. So I, I would consider that very aggressive and not not punchy because mm-hmm. you could tell it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It was kind of it was kind of soft. It wasn't yeah. hard. Hey, come here. You know, in slow motion, you could hey get, get, stop. What are he you came doing? from out of nowhere like a yeah. torpedo. Yeah. He like hey bro hey, hey bro hey what's up Look, hey hey get, get off me and we were all caught on shock because usually yeah. hey listen. If a dude run towards another, a group of guys, we're not thinking it's going to be like a, a, a like a romantic advancement. We're thinking this dude's trying to rob or he's coming with with a blow, you know. So, like when you see another guy or another gentleman, no matter who it may be, and just when it was three of us, me, Dubs and D's, we were out there walking on Pine Street and Long Beach. Just you know, we were parking lot pimping. Parking lot pimping is when um you don't want to go to the club. You wait for all the girls to come outside to the parking lot or to the street, and you act like you were in the club. Saves money, saves time. Who wants to be in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a crowded club anyway? You know, buying expensive drinks. So that's parking lot pimping. We did it. I don't know too frequently, but on, on boring Saturdays we would do it. So we're heading on Pine Street, just walking. You know, Dubs has his usual. He's a very good dresser. Dresses very well. These two. Me, okay, I dress okay. So we're walking down the street. Hey, look, we look like we're just um, three just single men. I don't know if we were all single at that time. I think we were, but I was walking down the street, and there's um, they had a hookah spot. So and it's, from out of nowhere, this guy just runs out of the hookah spot. So I'm thinking, oh, man. So my mind is processing, oh, we might have to hit this Middle guy. Eastern cat. Yes. I think, yeah. I think he might have been Persian or yeah, something. Yeah, or something. Well, Persian. Well, yeah. Persian, 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 Persian. Well, he was of Arabic descent. Yes. So in a, the, the hookah 